Hey y'all, my name is Allie and I am back with another video. So we are outside today because it is freaking gorgeous again. Um, so I just got back from my methadone appointment and um, I usually don't film this early because I like to come home and relax after my um going to get my methadone in the morning but um I figured that now would be a perfect time to hop into today's video I'm actually like sitting on this little swing here <laughs> it's so cool and then like we have the view of the beautiful field let me show you guys real quick Oh, almost got hit by a branch. So beautiful. Y'all, this is the view at my apartment. Okay, so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, So I know some of you wanted to hear about my addiction to... Actually, you know, I, you know, I'm just going to call it addiction, but it was not my favorite drug by far, <clears throat> um, which is crack, crack cocaine. I really did not want to film this video. Like, I really did not even want to talk about this. I didn't want anybody to know that I did this. So, yeah, this is pretty tough. But, um, let's just get into it. So, I started doing cocaine, like regular cocaine, not crack, when I was 16 years old. And, um, I really, really loved powder cocaine, regular cocaine, because it was like a social drug for me. And,. It really helped me be the social butterfly that I wanted to be and it was different than the downers that I so was used to and um, so pretty much I loved um, the fact that I could you know go out to the bar do a line in the bathroom and talk to anybody I wanted I would have the most confidence at that point you know um I just carried myself a lot better after I was high and um you know it makes you more talkative it makes you um easier when you're put on the spot and meeting new people so yeah that is like the initial reason why I loved it and I think, um, you know, it really gave me energy. And I've never really been, like, an energetic person. And um, that's how I started using it. Like, more in, like, a party scene type of way. But that soon changed because I actually started um, using it at work. So I never brought this up at my channel. On my channel, I mean. Um, I am diagnosed with lupus, SLE, systematic lupus. If you don't know what it is, um, I would look it up. Pretty much my immune system is attacking my body and my organs. And um, that makes me really susceptible, <laughs> susceptible to other diseases and infections. And, you know, with that comes a lot of fatigue I'm always tired I you know I get fevers like every other day I um but that that's how it used to be but now I'm on a lupus medication and it has helped wonders so now I don't get fevers as often and all that but back before I was even diagnosed with lupus I had no idea what was wrong with me I was really struggling to work every day I didn't know why I was getting fevers every I was getting fevers every day at the time and the lupus was really I'm gonna do a video on my lupus and how that drug how that affected my drug use too but um, pretty much 
the lupus was kicking my ass and it was really hard for me to work. So I began um, snorting coke at work to help me get through the day and it sure did help. Um, it helped a lot actually and um, the only thing that sucked about that was the money I was spending and the come down. You know, I would come down way quicker you know than any other drug because you get high a lot you know it's a big it's a big jolt up and a big jolt down so that was like really hard on my body and on my brain but it really helped with work and that's when I started you know when my lupus started affecting my body that's when I really um went from the recreational use to using it at work because I felt like I needed to to get through the work day and make the money I needed to make to you know supply my heroin addiction and you know supply the life that I wanted to live so um, after you know that that whole switch happened from recreational to needing it um, I got really carried away and I ended up since I was snorting so much coke every day um, at work, I turned to crack. Um, one of my friends knew how to cook it and she cooked it up. It was actually a coworker of mine. And um, um, what was I gonna say? Sorry, someone texted the phone and I got off track. Um, so anyway, yeah, I started smoking crack. She cooked it up, and after that, it was over. I never wanted to sniff coke again. I just loved the feeling of crack because the high was so much stronger, and it just, you know, it was so much stronger, and the peak was so much more euphoric than sniffing it, but the crash was way harder. Sorry if the wind is like being loud and shit. I'm gonna go back to the swing. Um, but pretty much, um, sorry if I'm all over the place. I feel like an idiot. But yeah, so I started smoking crack a lot. And um, I would not just do it at work, I would end up, you know, bringing some home and smoking at home. And I would be staying up all night, all hours of the night, smoking it. Um, I'd be leaving my house like like four or five times a night to go get more because you know I would go get some and I'd be like, okay, this is all I need. And then once it's gone and you're looking on the floor for rocks, looking anywhere for a fucking pebble, you um you go get more because the compulsion is so strong. Like I was saying in my other video, the compulsion is so strong in that moment. Like other drugs like uh, heroin and benzos, you don't like, if you do a bag of heroin or you take a Xanax, you're good for a couple of hours. If you do smoke a hit of crack, immediately two minutes later you are gonna want another one before the pipe even cools down enough for you to put the rock in without melting it I could not wait for the pipe to cool anything I was you know my body was in fiend mode and I had never felt like that before and it really made me feel like I had no control over myself that drug really made me feel like I had no control over myself my mind or my body um but yeah, so like I'd be going out all times and all times of the night, two, three in the morning to go, you know, keep getting more because that compulsion was so strong. And like I said in my other video, since that compulsion is so strong and you know that addiction gene, I mean not the addiction gene, the addiction to that drug is a very like you need hit after hit after hit. Whereas with other drugs you're good for a couple hours. So since you need hit after hit after hit, um, you don't realize how much you can fit in that crack pipe. Not just, a, not just a little rock that you're about to steam up, but your husband, your wife, your kids, your 
um, mom, your dad, your job, your house, your apartment, your car, everything, all of that can fit in that crack pipe and it'll, you'll light it up, it'll all fucking burn to smoke and just disintegrate into the air. It's true, I've seen people lose everything to this drug and it's just really sad, it's really sad and that scared me a lot because I felt like I could not control myself and I did not want to end up like that. So, you know, I kept doing it for a while. Um, I kept doing it and I'd be up all hours of the night, like I said, and that really like started fucking with my head. Um, it would really make my moods very erratic. Um, because I wasn't getting sleep like I should and you know staying up all night that really messes up your sleep schedule and all that and I'd be sleeping all day wasting the day away and I would stay up all night and I wouldn't want to go to work the next day so I you know I can totally relate to how people lose their jobs because of this you know you stay up all night going back and forth to get more and the drug itself keeps you wired keeps you up you can't even sit you're pacing back and forth all of that and once you're not sleeping as much as you should the paranoia paranoia really kicks in and um we, we would constantly look out the window because we thought that like police were outside or people were outside to rob us and people were gonna break in or we swore that we heard shit we heard like people talking outside or that the house was bugged with cameras we'd be looking around the house for a camera like a little bugged camera it was crazy and like so bad to where the blinds had like a permanent dent in it like you know how if you pull down the blind and you're peeking out it had a permanent dent in certain parts because we were peeking so much so yeah you can imagine how not fun that is um you know slowly but surely I really ended up stopping because I did not fucking enjoy that drug at all it did not make me you know after the first hit the first hit was amazing, but after that, I felt like shit. I couldn't relax. My muscles were so tense. My shoulders were always up to my ears. I was always pacing back and forth, so tense, peeking out the windows. Just, it was not enjoyable like my downers were to me. So, I slowly, you know, started distancing myself from the people and the drug, it, from the people that did it and the drug itself. It was really fucking hard though because even though I hated it, every time I was around it, which, you know, I'd be around it pretty often, um, every time I was around it, I still got that fucking compulsion to do it. And it was crazy because I was like, I absolutely hate this shit. I don't enjoy it. I don't like spending money on it. I hate everything about it. And I would still have to force myself, try so hard to not to not touch it because even though I hated it that is how addictive it is you will literally start smoking it just because your body is like aching for it literally aching for it I'm like staring at at people smoking it and I'm literally like I'm like shaking and I can like feel myself Fiending, and it's so crazy. I've never felt like that about another drug unless I was severely dope sick But that was after days This shit. I swear to God. It is the devil alongside with heroin crack cocaine is the devil I'm sure you guys have seen what it does to people over time You know lose their teeth their mind goes haywire. I'm sure you've seen those people out at the corner stores and stuff but you know I don't judge anybody but like I said, you know, I really didn't even like it. And that compulsion was so strong for me. And it took a lot of willpower for me to say no. And um, when I was around it, you know, really, 
turn it down because I knew I wouldn't enjoy it. And that's what I kept saying to myself, but it was still so difficult. If you've done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So anyway, that is like all I have to say about that. If you guys want to hear anything else or have any questions that could like jog my memory of any other things you want to hear, like maybe stories of me getting high on crack or getting high, you know, a lot of you guys really like hearing about my drug use and I don't mind that. I love telling the stories and like letting you guys know, you know, about my life. That's the point of this channel. But this video in particular was kind of embarrassing for me because I never wanted anybody to know that I did this. But it is better to be vulnerable and it's better to let people know that they're not alone. Um, addiction does not discriminate. It doesn't care how pretty you are. It doesn't care how much money you have or how much money you came from. It doesn't care, you know, what color you are. It doesn't care what race you are. Addiction does not discriminate. So... Like I said, you guys are never alone. Please like this video, subscribe, and share to potentially save somebody's life. If you guys have any questions for me or like any feedback, my Facebook name is Allie, A-L-L-Y, hate, H-A-I-G-H-T, and I'll put all my information down below. I love you guys so much. Um, and if you ever need anything, please message me. And please leave a comment if... You have any video ideas or any questions? I love you guys so much.